What you're looking at here is the latest version of Procreate, Procreate version 4.3. They've added text and they've added animation and a couple other things and that's what we're going to be talking about today. All right, so the big thing that everybody has been waiting for is text. And if you hit the wrench, the very first thing you're going to see over here in the ad section, it's not the first thing you see, but you're going to see add text. And of course, you tap on that and it adds text. It's pretty simple. And then when you do add text, you have the opportunity to go in here. You can change your font. You can play around with different things. Obviously, you can adjust the size. You can adjust kerning, tracking, letting, baseline. You can even adjust the opacity from here. There are some quirks that come with text that I think are worth reviewing really quickly before we jump into some of the other features. First of all, you can import a font. It's not really a quirk. You could browse anywhere. I have a fonts folder, don't have much in it, but I can grab a font like this one, Hijinx, and it's gonna go ahead and import it. And then it should be over here on the left-hand side. Let me scroll over, there it is, Hijinx. So there we go, we've added that font so I can make it as big as I want. Then if I wanna change it from text, I can change it to anything I want by bringing up the keyboard and saying, hello. Now, as I resize, one of the things that happens here is that uh, my text is not fitting in that box. As long as I am in this font editing section, I can come in here and grab the side of my box and make that bigger as I need it. Now, if I wanna resize it, I could do that, but your text is always gonna be sitting within that bounding box. One thing that you're not gonna see in this editing box is the color of your type. If you wanna change that, you just go to your color and you can select any color that you want. And then when you're done selecting color, you just tap off the color and it's gonna take you back to your editing. When you're done, you just tap on done. And now it's just like anything else. You can move it around with the arrow tool. You can put it wherever you need it to be, all that fun stuff. There are some other things that are worth noting about text is if we go to the layer palette, you're gonna see that that layer looks a little bit different. It has our little text icon. This is still editable. All you have to do in the layers is tap on the layer and go back to edit text. And that's gonna let you come back in here and I can go in here and uh, let me see, select it. I can grab my type. I can, I can do all of my editing again as I need to. There are some things you should be aware of. I'm gonna reopen that layer for a second. Say I start editing this text in any way outside of the normal way of using the text editor. For example, recoloring it. Say I take uh, the shade of red and what ends up happening as soon as you start modifying the colors or playing with that layer in any way, what happens? It's no longer a text layer, it's just a normal layer. That's totally fine, but just something you should be aware of when you're playing around with it. As soon as you start editing it outside of the editor, uh, it's no longer text and it no longer has those properties of text. Beyond text, there's some really cool features going on here. For example, if I just want to see one layer, I can go ahead and tap on the check mark and hold it for a second and it's gonna isolate just that layer. And if I wanna bring everything else back, I tap and hold on that check mark again, there we go. And I can do this with any of the layers in my illustration. Go ahead and tap and hold there. There's also options to export layers individually, which wasn't an option before. If we go to our wrench and we go over to share, down here we have share layers. And one of the options is PDF. We can export this and it's gonna take every single layer and export it as a document or, or a page within that PDF document. Same thing with PNG files. What that's gonna do is it's gonna take all your layers and it's gonna export them as PNG files, which can be really handy. And the last one, this is the one I'm personally really excited about. This is the ability to make an animated GIF. Now this isn't really set up to be an animated GIF or GIF, however you wanna pronounce it, but you can do it. Now, as you can see here, all it's doing is it's taking each layer and it's making them a frame in the animation. And I can actually slow those frames down that's too slow. Let's see if we can speed it up. So I can make it five frames per second. I can make it higher if I need to. I can make the background transparent. And then there's obviously your exporting settings. Right now, with an illustration like this, which is not set up for animation, it's really not that special. However, I can see a lot of opportunity here. So that is definitely something I'm gonna be playing with, something I'm probably gonna be doing a tutorial on in the next week or two. So anyway, looking forward to that. That should be a lot of fun to play with. Another thing over in the layer palettes is they've added some more blending modes. Uh, I'm gonna go over here. Where did they put those? I think those are in contrast maybe? Yeah, they've added a couple to contrast. So we have dark color, light color, vivid light, linear light, all that stuff. These are things that have been in Photoshop. And I think what this is doing, all all of these things, whether we're talking about text or whether we're talking about these new layer styles, are starting to give us feature to feature parity with Photoshop in terms of like the illustration elements and things like that. 
But one thing in the notes that I don't know how to access yet that I'm still looking for is this idea of pressure smoothing in the brushes. I'm assuming it has something to do with the actual settings in our brushes and being able to control the pressure a little bit better. I haven't really seen anything just kind of poking around of, of where that might be or what new settings might be in here. And so that's another thing that I personally have to jump into and, and explore a little bit better but uh, it's kind of cool that they're still adding little tiny features like that here and there. So that is the brand new Procreate 4.3 update. Are you excited for these features? Is there anything else you still need? It seems to me like they have most of the main core features that people have been asking for for years now that we have quick shapes, now that we have text. What else would you like to see? What do you think Procreate should tackle next? Let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in a couple of days.